our study of evil, we come to the 10th topic. Number 29, the video or audio. And we pick up on misery, pain, and suffering. And we got about 30 subject topics on this one. So this one's going to take a couple weeks as we do five uh, a week. But we're on number 10. And again, the, the notice that we have in each one of these videos is you got to get them all. You can't jump into number three, number eight, no, only number five. And I'm not pushing all my videos. <clears throat> Because when we get into the study of evil, there can be confusion. And as we always say in the beginning, evil can be sin, but evil can be a consequence of sin. Or evil can be a sin and the consequences. <clears throat> so misery, pain, and suffering. Evil brings pain and suffering by our actions, and not only to ourselves, but to others. Our sins and other people's sins causes evil, the consequence of evil. Evil can be sin, and evil can be judgment upon sin. Either all the reaction of the can can cause misery to one and all. Now, pain, misery, and suffering. Let me give you two illustrations of suffering. A man indulges in smoking a tobacco product <clears throat> as i have and thank god he's given me the victory and i suffer from emphysema now let me tell you what that means as far as the evil of my smoking i quit smoking around 1999-2000 i still wake up with the smoker's cough 20 years later my lungs still hurt. I still have emphysema. I don't have COPD. But I still have the emphysema. It's there. I still get winded. Now, smoking tobacco products, and you've got children in your house that don't smoke, and they get cancer. They get emphysema. They didn't smoke, but you did. Smoking, even tobacco, even alcohol. You could be driving home from school, driving to work, going somewhere peaceful, and you can have somebody who has been involved with drinking alcohol, driving behind a car, come over and slam your car. And yes, it's happened. The drunk driver survives and, and no problems, so for legal. And the innocent bystanders in the other car, total death, permanent injuries. And when God told Adam not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and it shall cause death, will cause death, surely. There was no evil before Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> Only evil was in, it was in Satan. Genesis 19, 19. Again, we do five subtitles. Genesis 19, 19, Behold now, thy servant has found grace in thy sight, that thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. That's Lot. Lot still wasn't completely interested in what God's plan was. Lot is worried about evil, death. Anything that would cause his death, wild animals, thieves, overexerting himself, climbing the mountain. 
Unlike the death that God just caused upon the sinners of Sodom and Gomorrah, his hometown, for many, death is a fearful thing. And it would be evil anything that would bring it on quicker. And for many, death is an evil, it's a fearful thing. And they'll spend all their living and all their needs and all their goods for themselves or for a loved one. Yet for the Christian to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. A Christian has no fear of death. Now death itself is not sin, but it is the consequences of sin. The wages of sin is death. Whether you're saved or lost, you're going to die. Genesis 44, 34. For how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? This is Judah speaking to Benjamin about, I'm speaking to Joseph about Benjamin. Least preventure I see the evil that shall come upon my father. The misery and pain and sorrow for a great love Jacob had for Joseph and Benjamin, children of Rachel, the possibly death or depression. I mean, they, uh, uh, Jacob had all his love for Joseph and Joseph was taken away. And then it looks like he passed all his love upon Benjamin because he had great love for Rachel, not Leah, or the handmaids. That if it couldn't have been the love upon Joseph, it would have been the love upon Benjamin. And Joseph has set forth to be, <coughs> excuse me, that Benjamin also would be re remain behind. And that Judah had to make had to step in and, and make a pledge of his own life. If Benjamin the lad did not return home. And there's a misery and pain and sorrow caused by missed loved ones. I don't know what the pain, well, I do. My wife had a, a fetus that was stillborn, but that's not the same of losing a child. I've never lost a child, except for a fetus stillborn. I know how that is. I have not lost a mother or father. My mom's saved and still living. My dad is not saved. I'm praying for him and he's still living. I don't understand what that would feel like. I have been a widower twice. I'm a widower now. Two wives, both of them cancer. And there's a misery and pain and sorrows caused by the death. Both my wives suffered with pain in hospitals. And the worst thing that can happen, believe it or not, some idiot trying to come up to you, try to give you advice that they don't know anything about. They think that the passing of a child is the same as the passing of a spouse. It's not as much as the passing of a parent. But there is misery, pain, and sorrow, and evil that follows. I can imagine the prodigal son just, I mean, they all say, you know, he's out there sitting on the porch, rocking back and forth, and then he saw, I can imagine he had painful days and painful moments and just evil in his life because his son left. Because he really loved his son because when his son came, man, he, he, he went forward to meet the son. And that Judah's response is, if I don't come back to, with, with Benjamin, my father's going to go into depression, and he's going to die, and there'll be preachers, well, you know, they ought not to do that. Then you need to shut up, because you don't know what death can do to you. And I'm telling you, as we're, I am this close sometimes, to say, Lord, let, them let it happen to them. 
I'm not so cruel, but I, I think it. And again, like I said with Adam and Eve, there was no death and sorrow to Genesis chapter 3. And we read later on that when Eve gives birth to Seth, the third, the third son, she tells us that God has given me another son to replace Abel, who Cain has slain. She knew exactly what happened to her two boys. And I can imagine her getting off away from Adam into this. Why did I eat that fruit? Look at the trouble it's caused. There is an evil consequence for a loved one. Listen, in this day and age, people running through red lights and, and people just, you know, under all kinds of, of substance abuse behind the wheel. Like I said, I'm a widower right now looking to get married, but when my wife, Lisa and Tracy would go out on their own, I, I worry. You don't have to worry. Then you don't love. Because you're going to be concerned about your loved one out in the car, out in the streets. Out. That's love. Well, Jesus didn't worry. God didn't. They're holy and righteous. I'm not. The absence of a loved one brings an evil upon us. <clears throat> Whether they're going away or wherever they go, maybe they just moved away, the missing of them. Or death. Genesis 50, verse 17. So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now. The trespass of thy brother. Now, J J Jacob's sons, Joseph's brothers, are worried that, oh boy, we're in trouble. And their sins, they didn't, they did unto thee evil. And now I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy servants of God. <coughs> Again, forgive me. I'm fighting this cold. God, their father. And Joseph went when Joseph wept when they spanked him. Now Joseph's life after being sold, he was put in the slave market. He was falsely accused of rape. He went to jail. He departed from his home and his family family many years because his brothers were angry and envious of him. And the brothers are come to the point their father has died. And all right, now their father has died. Joseph is going to vengeance upon the evil. Now, I don't know if Joseph's brothers, if Joseph sat down and told him, hey, guys, you, don't, you want to know what happened to me because of you? I don't know if they knew about Poniphar's wife. I don't know if they knew about him going to jail and being sold on the slave market. But his brothers have come up to him and say, they send an ambassador. Joseph, forgive us for the evil that we've done. We threw you in that pit and you cried. You sought for mercy and we didn't give it to you. We sold you to Ishmael. And then we went and lied to our father. And then, I don't know if they knew, he, he, was, he was accused of rape. He was put in jail in the book of Psalms says that the fetters hurt his hands. And the evil here is the consequences or actions or reactions 
others have caused in another person's life. Again, that illustration. A man gets intoxicated, gets behind the wheel of a car. He goes out and he kills or maims or injures somebody else. And the people of the innocent car did not drink, did not have any sin relating to the accident. But yet the evil that that intoxicated man had caused and that's evil. It's not a sin because the occupants of that car didn't drink. Though all have sinned and come short of the glory of car, uh, God, those occupants were coming home from a game, coming home from school, going to school, going to work. It was the sin of the man that drank the alcohol. It is the sin of the brothers that sold Joseph, not Joseph himself. And yet Joseph received the evil, the consequences. And his brothers were worried about vengeance. I can imagine, unless the guy is cold-hearted, just wicked and vile and uncaring, which many are, but that man who was involved in, in the... In the DUI accident who was intoxicated himself. Man, I can imagine for the rest of his life he felt the evil, the consequences of his sin and the reactions he'd done to somebody else. Exodus 5.19 So, as you turn to Exodus 5.19, let's realize the evil The consequences of sin affects others. I don't know how many babies are born presently addicted to narcotics or even alcohol or tobacco. And in the womb, they didn't do nothing. And I have heard dire stories. Of those, and let me say, pathetic babies, because there are pathetic, born into a substance abuse because of the mother. And those babies didn't do the substance abuse. And one would be completely fooled or deceived to think, I am involved in a sin and it's hurting nobody else. And you've been deceived. Exodus 5, 19. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in an evil cause, case. After it was said, you shall not minish aught from the bricks of your daily task. Now Moses goes up and speaks to Pharaoh, said, let my people go, says God. And God and, Mo, and Pharaoh's like, no. Well, I guess they, they, the Israelites have more time on their hands because they want to go worship their God. So what we're going to do is, <coughs> forgive me, yes. <coughs> forgive me. We're going to give them the same 100% load of making bricks. But you're going to have to go get the supplies now. All right, we, uh, let's, let's bring it up to date. You're going to build a house. Like you, you're going to build one house for a set time. But we're not going to go to the lumber shop anymore for you. We're not going to have the supplies. To you're going to have to go to the lumber department. And you're going to have to order and get and bring back everything you need, but you're still going to build the same house in the same amount of time. Pharaoh, because of Moses and the requirement of God, he had worsened the burden of the children of Israel. 
produce the same quota of bricks while the straw a must need we're not going to apply we're not going to give you no more made their service even harder and pay for i mean you're in egypt desert hot and there is an evil being made hardship or even harder and a near impossibility And if your boss or foreman comes up to you and has a demanding that is much higher than the demanding you had before, it is impossible. That's an evil. Do you know how much more I'm going to have to sweat and how much I'm going to have to worry? How hard I'm going to have to work, I'm going to have to put in overtime. And it's not to the evil of the employee. It is not to the sin of the employee. But is a consequence of evil. To demand more than what you demanded before. When it's above and beyond what is capable of happening. Now, if you got to write one more report, then you have to write, you know, this one week. I mean, that's not a demanding thing. But when you got a staff... A normal staff working in an emergency room, and they're taking care of emergency patients. You know, uh, I broke my leg. Uh, I've got a cold or a flu. Uh, my my son has these bumps or a rash. Uh, this person was involved in an automobile accident. This person thought he he's having a heart attack. This person had a stroke. And then you get a, a, a fully loaded jumbo jet with the, 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 the crew crashes in the area of that hospital. And now they've got all the people they've got a bus that was hit by a train in the area. And all those people now, I mean, the consequences of an evil accident has brought more of a workload to the ER. And the consequence of those people coming to the ER is, is an evil of an accident. Somebody was at fault. Somebody's, listen, an accident doesn't just happen. You trace that accident all the way to the origin of that accident, and there was a sin somewhere. And the consequences of that sin and of that accident, it's a heavy workload on the, on the ER staff. And there are people, now you got to reroute traffic. And it's going to take extra time to get where they're going. And then there are families who are worried who hear about the story on the radio or the television. Now they're worried. Now they want to know about their loved ones. And that, that went to the very first part. That went to back, back to Jacob. He's worrying about where's my son. And the people who run the bus company or the airline or the train company, now they're worried. Is it Was it our fault? Like Jacob's brothers worrying about <clears throat> what they did to Joseph. And we have, you have a greater work of what we're looking at right now for the train crew. They're going to have to go and underail that train and the, the tow trucks and the police with the traffic and the airline company to remove the wreckage, whatever it is. 
for what we call one simple accident. Exodus 5.23. We did that one. No, Exodus 5.23. Last one. For, I, for since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, this is Moses now speaking to God, from the reference of verse 5.19, He has Pharaoh, he has Pharaoh has done evil to his people, neither has thou delivered thy people at all. Again, we're at the point he made the workload harder, God. And we've got the same evil we did number four. The workship is harder. The person that's in the ER goes up to the president of the hospital. We, it's much, we had an airplane accident. We had a train accident. And you have not called in the extra staff. We've got all these crimes in the city. Well, excuse me, sir. We had an accident with a train and a bus. You need to bring more police officers. You need to keep the ones on duty over to handle. Somebody going back, and I don't want to reduce God down to a boss, but Moses going to God, God, it's worse. <laughs> I got to report to you. And it's that person in, in the ER going to their boss, it's a tragedy that just happened. And our present work staff is not going to be, we need help. That's what Moses is doing. The children of Israel has brought to Moses their ear. Hey, you made the workload harder. And Moses has gone to God. Hey, uh, we got a problem here. And that happens in life. And some people say, you're complaining. It's not complaining. Well, Israel's complaining. But did they not have the right to complain? Is not the truth? It's not like there is no water in the wilderness. <laughs> and then there were 12 wells. And Moses reports back to God, uh, uh, look, what, look what happened. It's not what you told me would happen. I'm overburdened. So those are the five aspects of evil for today. Lord willing, we'll pick up more evil. A pain. I said this one has this one has 29 subcategories. So we do five, five, about six more weeks. Go along page 27, or 26 of 54 pages. So God bless us and may God be willing to. I ask you to pray for us. Pray for the financial needs of us. Needs for a wife. And it's every need that we have to be need that I, needs I don't even know what we need yet. Thank you.